Welcome to Animals Voice Podcast. I'm your host for another few minutes, uh, Kevin McKenzie. Thank you for joining us. Uh, A very special podcast and um, one that uh, I'm going to be handing over the reins of the broadcast to Callie Millman. How are you today, Callie? I'm very well. Thank you, Kevin. I guess for the next few seconds, you're the guest, and then we're going to kind of swap things off here. Uh, This is a a special broadcast. I came to the Ontario SPCA about uh, almost five years ago now, and soon after began hosting this program, but the time has come for me to hand the reins over, and we thought there would be a a kind of a neat show to do a transition between Callie and I as Callie takes over as host in the new year. You know what, you've had so many guests that have given you so much information about what they do, and I think this is a great opportunity for us to learn a little bit about Kevin and all of the great work that he does with the organization. So I'd love to jump right in, if that's good with you. That's great with you. Okay. So you mentioned uh, about your beginnings uh, when starting at the Ontario SPCA and, yeah. you know, sort of where you came from. And, and starting here, what were some of the things that excited you most about joining the Ontario SPCA? Well, I've, I listen, I'm an animal lover. I have been my whole life and uh, felt like a privilege to come to an organization that, uh, you know, the whole purpose and mission are about helping animals in need. Uh, The fact that I was then able to segue into hosting a broadcast like this was very special to me. And my my background before I ever got into fundraising, uh, you know, going back over 18 years now was in radio. So the fact that uh, the powers that be here, the powers that be saw fit to let me do this in addition to my normal duties here was it, it was a lot of fun and it felt like a privilege for me how exciting and how wonderful for us to be able to utilize the skill that you already <laughs> had coming in so that's fantastic and when did you start with animals voice podcast well i listen it's it's over four years ago now so i would say the spring of 2013 uh, i did my first broadcast and, you know, it was something where um, the, the people in the communications department that were taking care of the broadcast at the time, they also had other responsibilities. They knew I had a background in radio and a love for, for public speaking and, and broadcasting. So uh, they asked if I would consider taking it over and I jumped at it. Awesome. And you know what? So many amazing guests that you've had the opportunity to interview. Um, you've heard incredible stories from so many different people. Do you have any that are most memorable to you of some of the people you've met or the stories that have been shared? Yeah. You know, it's it's funny uh, talking to uh, producer extraordinaire Emily uh, about this broadcast and the type of things you and I were going to talk about and how to make this make sense. Uh, when I saw we were going to reference some of the most memorable broadcasts, uh, I have some that jumped to my head right away. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to be able to interview uh, FBI profiler John Douglas twice and, you know, spending an hour talking with him each of those occasions. And this is someone whose work inspired the television show Criminal Minds, but also a number of books, television shows, movies have been based on his work. Uh, and, and getting to sit down and talk to John about the links between criminal behavior and animal cruelty and and how you know so many links have been made between people that are involved in serial crime and those who may have you know that may have been a flag that they were they were um, committing animal abuse Mm -hmm. early on and years and years ago before this sort of thing was tracked in the united states if they had seen uh animal cruelty behavior as that flag that they they maybe would have had tracking in place earlier on. It would have helped them in solving more crimes. So interviewing John Douglas was fascinating. Uh, There's a gentleman by the name of Medrick Cousineau. Medrick is a Canadian Forces retired uh, helicopter pilot. We got to interview him on Animal's Voice podcast uh, talking about PTSD and his dog Ty that helps him deal with PTSD. And it was one of the most fascinating broadcasts we've ever had because in the midst of the broadcast, as we're asking him to describe how does Ty help you, he actually began having a bit of a PTSD episode. And as the camera rolled and the mics captured it, we got to see and hear Ty reacting to um, his owner and his his mate, Medrick, having a PTSD moment and and we got to see the dog slowly try to lead Medrick out of the room and to a quiet place which is what a service dog uh like like Ty is trained to do so that was fascinating uh th- there are staff here I've had the pleasure of interviewing um and sometimes multiple times Inspector uh, Scott Silva uh Agent Brad Dewar uh these are people that are out on on the road 
doing our animal cruelty investigations, and I don't know how they do their jobs. And they have these amazing personalities where they are they're articulate, they're funny, uh, they could read you the phone book and make it sound interesting. So I've really enjoyed my time interviewing them. Um, my daughters, Jenna and Robin, uh, came in and I was able to interview them at one point on the broadcast, uh, and that made me very proud to That's have them awesome. as part of it. Um, <laughs> But the one that really stands out is uh, we, we interviewed uh, Jeannie and Tammy from Beat the Heat Kenora. And uh, they are a group that helped us get into an Indigenous community and did so much work in the early days of our work in Northern Ontario. We're doing so much work now in Northern Ontario where we help these communities deal with pet overpopulation and their inability just to have critically needed animal welfare services. So talking to Jeannie and, and Tammy from Beat the Heat Kenora about the difference in this community before we went and after. Kids were scared to play on their front lawns because of the wild dogs, the, you know, the community dogs. Um, adults were walking up and down the main street with clubs and baseball bats because the community dogs that lived in the wild, they're not, they're not vicious, but they're hungry. And if you look up, you're walking home from the grocery store and you're carrying a grocery bag. And suddenly you look up and there are 25 dogs running out of the woods at you. That's intimidating. Mm -hmm. So then they explained to me the afterwards. After we went and we did spay-neuter activity, we microchipped all of the animals that were identified as being owned. We did um, uh, animal uh, uh, welfare educational services uh, while we were there and, and education sessions, I should say. And we rounded up about 75 dogs from that community before we left. And so the juxtaposition of before we went and hearing about kids scared to play on their lawns and adults scared to walk up and down Main Street. And then afterwards, kids are playing on their front lawns. Adults aren't walking around with weapons because they're so uh, intimidated by the community dogs. That, that one sticks with me a lot because it just... It signifies everything that we do here, that we're trying to accomplish here. Going into a community... Helping the dogs find better outcomes in life and find their forever home. But we helped the community and the quality of life in that community based on what Tammy and Jeannie told me. So uh, that, that one stands wow. out a lot. That's incredible. Just, you know what, hearing even just a few of these stories that obviously have impacted you just goes to show what the impact of all of these people and all of the stories have on animal welfare and what a vast world animal welfare is. So, of course, anybody out there, if you have not seen or heard these podcasts yet, go check out our iTunes and SoundCloud because you're going to want to see them and hear them. They are really incredible stories. We're going to take a quick break, Kevin. When we come back, we're going to hear a little bit more about uh, some of the projects that are coming up for Kevin, some of the things he's working on outside of the podcast, and we will uh, come right back. Welcome back, everybody, to Animals Voice Podcast. We are here with, well, what's soon to be your former host, <laughs> Kevin McKenzie, and I'm your new host, Callie Milliman. And we're just kind of having a little chat here with Kevin about, uh, you know, some of the things he experienced with being a part of the Animals Voice Podcast. And, you know, as we make this transition, what I'm really wondering is, what is it that you enjoyed most about being the host of the podcast? Well, you know what, before the break, I highlighted a whole bunch of my favorite episodes, but... When you wrap all of that up, uh, what it what it means to me and represents is that we have an opportunity to be sharing really important stories about animals and animal welfare. And I think that was my favorite part of being the host of this broadcast. And it's my favorite part of the show is that a lot of organizations and a lot of groups put out a, a podcast, but it's self-serving and it's patting themselves on the back or it's beating their own drum. A lot of the guests that we've had on and a lot of the topics that we talk about are not uh, a specific topic or issue that benefits the Ontario SPCA solely. Right. You know, we focus on issues that matter to animals. So I think that was my favorite part was being able to come out here and present stories um, with with high degree of frequency that had nothing to do with our work. A lot of the time it was 
just hearing about something that's really important in the animal world, a new product, a new service, uh, uh, you know, a new thought process around socialization for animals. These are things that we were able to bring forward because it matters to our listeners and matters to, to people that love animals. Yeah, it's great to hear that, Kevin. I know we have so many inquiries from so many different people, our communities, about what services we offer and what we do. But yes, as you mentioned, you know, getting the chance to profile and highlight um, so many other services, you know, it just gives people the opportunity to see, again, how vast the world of animal welfare is. And of course, if there's anybody out there that's interested in getting involved in animal welfare in any capacity, you know, there's so many different areas that you can explore. So, you know, as I mentioned before, check out uh, some of Kevin's previous podcasts because there's tons of information in there about the various areas and the departments and different people that are working with different companies and services and tons of information in there. So that's great, Kevin. Yeah, I'm glad that stuff doesn't disappear now. I thought yeah. losing the podcast that that's, that's all gone, but apparently yeah, no, it's we don't want to there. erase it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so let's start chatting a little bit about what you're up to, Kevin. So obviously now we've learned so much about the podcast, but we know that you have a ton of other things that you're working on or you're planning to continue to work on uh, now that you have, uh, you know, sort of taken a backseat on the po- pa- podcast, sorry, and now that I'm taking the reins. So what are some of the projects you've got uh, going on? You know, I, it's something I used to talk about during the podcast. So I was fortunate to be the host. And I loved it, but it wasn't my primary role here at the Ontario SPCA. Uh, I was hired to be a uh, major gifts officer, or I guess my job title is development manager of leadership giving. So I'm really fortunate. I get to meet with a lot of our donors and supporters that are capable of making very generous donations. And I get to spend time with incredible people that um, are able to fund entire projects or large portions of projects through their generosity and their large gifts. Uh, and, and I have to focus on that. You know, we have a, a, a lot to accomplish in animal welfare. So earlier in 2017, when we started talking about that it was time to transition me out of the hosting role, um, first of all, your work across the organization is fabulous. You're everywhere. You know, Ke- you, Callie does so much that's public facing. So it only made sense that the podcast would have a new host and the host of uh, the broadcast should be the person who is outward facing and doing so much of our media work and and public speaking anyway. So you're amazing at it. It's Thank a natural you, fit for you. <laughs> no, so it made a lot of sense. So um, I was I was happy to be passing it off to to someone like you. Uh, but there are so many projects that. I need to devote my time to and and meeting with donors across the province. You ask, what are those projects? So, I mean, the people in the broadcast have heard me talk about the uh, Provincial Dog Rehabilitation Center. We are still in the midst of, of uh, a big fundraising campaign to build Canada's first Provincial Dog Rehab Center. Uh, it's going to house the dogs that have been terribly abused, terribly neglected. Um, they're not really adoptable in the condition that we get them in. Um, and it's also going to be housing a lot of these northern dogs. And in, in, earlier in the broadcast, I referenced our, our work in the north. A lot of the northern dogs that have never had a collar on, never been walked on a leash, they've never been indoors, they've never seen a table, uh, a television set, a ceiling fan. I mean, these are things that will be intimidating. These dogs need acclimation to becoming an adoptable house pet or, or a domestic pet. So the Dog Rehabilitation Center is still a big part of what I'm doing. I'm raising funds. I'm talking to people all over the province about funding it. We're doing well. Um, we're, we, we've raised a lot of money, uh, and we hope to get shovels in the ground uh, sometime in the middle of 2018 for that center. But uh, th- there's still a big need there, and uh, I hope people will consider to think of that project. And contact me if you'd like to talk about it. Well, where can people get info <clears throat> for that? Well, the, you know what? Uh, I, I am the contact for that project internally. So you can give me a call at one 668 And I'm at extension 309. People can also email me at kmckenzie at ospca.on.ca. And I'd be happy to fill you in on the project. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be an important one and fill a very important need in Ontario. Um, I mentioned our work in the north, so our northern work is expanding, and the crisis facing uh, animals in northern Ontario is probably the most significant crisis facing animals, I would venture to say, in Canada. There are so many um, pets, and not pets, there are so many animals in northern Ontario that are community dogs, and there's an overpopulation issue. We are visiting as many communities as we possibly can, doing the spay-neuter activity, microchipping, 
humane education, and then rounding up as many of those those community dogs as we can to bring back to the south, spread out at our network of, of um, animal centers that we own and the affiliates that we work so closely with. Um, but that's a big job. There's a lot of communities to get to. So that project needs funding. I'm talking to, to donors across the province about helping us get to more communities, helping give us the equipment and the funding we need to reach into those communities and change the lives of the people that live there and the animals. Um, and, and another exciting aspect, and it, it does play a role in our work in the north, but also elsewhere in the province, is the eventuality of having mobile spay-neuter units. The Ontario SPCA is getting closer, and we're, we're trying to raise the funds. Um, to purchase our own mobile spay neuter units. I mean, we've we've been lucky. We've been borrowing the Welland Humane Society. Uh, John, uh, the executive director there. Uh, Thanks, big, Welland. <laughs> yeah, big fan of the broadcast, and and we're a big fan of yours. But we keep borrowing their mobile unit when we go to the north and take part in these projects, and we're co- collaborating with them on all of this work in the mm-hmm. north. But we need our own because we can accomplish so much more if we have our own units. So. You know, whether we're able to get one or two of our own mobile spay neuter units that we could then travel the province, take into the communities that are financially depressed or in need, where um, maybe it's not reasonable for some people to spay and neuter their pet because they have tough decisions to make every month. Can, am I going to pay my cable bill? Am I going to pay my mortgage this month, my rent? Uh, or am I going to do the responsible pet ownership thing and spay or neuter? So if we can bring that service to the communities that really need it and and offer it at an affordable price, um, we can take a, a real chunk out of the pet overpopulation issue in Ontario. So I'm talking to donors and, and people across the province about that project and that this is a big lofty goal we have is to tackle this. Um, you know, if we have a mobile spay-neuter unit, you can take it anywhere we want in the province and and really where it's needed the most, that's that's going to make an impact. So those are the three main things that are top of mind for me right now. But you know what? We own uh, 12 animal centers that we operate across the province, and I'm always visiting with donors across the province. I, I'm stationed out of Stouffville here, but I really travel a lot and, and get to meet so many wonderful people. And whether it's the lovely people in Napanee who this past summer paid to have the cat room renovated there so the cats have a better environment. Um, There are so many projects like that, like that one across the province where I go and I speak to the donors and I identify what is their interest and then I try to connect it with a need that our organization has and I put them together and in the end it helps animals, helps the organization, but it's helping the animals is what matters. So. Uh, I got lots to get done. Yeah, it sounds like yes. you're a busy man, Kevin. You're a bit, you know what? Honestly, hearing about some of those bigger projects, it's it's very exciting. Um, but also, it sounds so wonderful to hear that um, there's these potential resources like a mobile spay neuter clinic that are coming. You know, it's exciting to be able to talk about these things. Fingers crossed, reaching out to everybody and <laughs> you talking to all of these donors. You know, because this is the type of support that our communities are looking for. Yeah. You know, I know um, as you mentioned folks in our communications department, like our producer, Emily, and myself, you know, we hear this from people every day. So it's very exciting. So uh, thank you for that work that you're doing and uh, excited to see what's coming. Yeah. Big things on the horizon, we hope. Absolutely. So now that we are transitioning and to me being the new host, I want to know if you have any advice for a new host coming into Animal's Voice. You don't, you don't need my advice. (laughs) You're, you're very good in front of the camera and speaking publicly. So you don't need my advice. Just you're, you, um, you share my love and passion of animals. So that's going to come out when you're interviewing people, when you're having conversations with people. I'm not going to give you any broadcasting advice because you don't need it. <laughs> my advice to you is to trust your producer. Uh, I've been very fortunate uh, the last uh, few years here. Emily Cook, my producer, director, uh, extraordinaire, uh, makes me look and sound prepared and knowledgeable in all of these broadcasts. And I owe... Any success I've had in these broadcasts to Emily, uh, so uh, work with her, and she will. Uh, you're 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 in good hands with Emily. So awesome! Thank yeah. you so and, much, and Kevin. thank you, Emily, very much for Absolutely. everything. Absolutely, thanks, it. Emily. <laughs> very excited to be moving forward as the new host of Animals Voice podcast, and of course, a very huge thank you to you, Kevin McKenzie, for all of your amazing years sharing these stories and meeting all of these wonderful people, and of course, uh, for being an incredible host. Do I get to come back? 
Probably never. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> we it's, an, would, it's enough with the Kevin. <laughs> we would love to have you back, yeah. Kevin. Of course, we're going to uh, want to keep uh, tabs on some of these exciting projects yeah. that you spoke about. We're uh, going to follow up with you and hear a little bit about Peterborough again, because that's a very exciting project. And we're going to want to follow up, hopefully, uh, maybe in the spring or summer, once things start to move forward with that project, which is very exciting. So thank you once again, of course, Kevin, and to our amazing producer, Emily. And we want you to continue to follow our amazing stories through Animals Voice podcast and subscribe. Kevin, do the honors. Well, yeah, please find us on SoundCloud, on iTunes. And we started doing video like a couple years ago. And I have a face for radio. This is why I believe I'm leaving the podcast <laughs> is, is because we introduced video, which messed everything up for me. But you can find us on YouTube and a lot of uh, really fascinating content out there not outside of Animals Voice as well. But make sure you subscribe to us, iTunes, SoundCloud, Look up the broadcasts on iTunes, um, uh, YouTube, and please continue to listen. And uh, thanks for tuning in all these years. We'll see everybody in the new year. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.